today I have a Hitachi plasma display monitor. It's from 2004. It's a model number CMP420V2. And it doesn't turn on. In the back, we'll see the sets populated with tons of boards. This being an older model, we have our Y sustain board. And if you look at these big ICs here, this looks to have the hybrid ICs. This is going to be an LG made unit. Here's our power supply board. Our Z sustain, our common mode sustain board here. Again, it's got the hybrid ICs. We have our control boards down here and our interface boards. This set does not have and another, this is another, uh, this is actually, I guess, our AV interface here. This set does not have a tuner in it. It is just a monitor. What's kind of cool about this unit is if we take a look at the bottom of it here, as you'll see, it's got your normal AV inputs on it. It also has a SCART input, which is kind of unique. That was more used in Europe than anything else. And over on this other side, it has a DVI, a DVI input as well as VGA inputs. And this is an, S, an RS-232. It's obviously probably for updating the software. But this one's totally dead. Okay, on this plasma, this is our power supply board here. And because nothing's working at all, I have to assume that we may have a problem in the standby supply. So, um, standby, I, I believe, is this little transformer here. So let's just uh, hook up the meter and we'll measure some voltages and see whether there's anything. I get nothing here on the secondary side. Just measuring around with some of these components and there's nothing on the secondary side here. Uh, this will be the primary, so I gotta find a hot ground and we'll check and see if there's anything going in on the primary side and see whether this oscillator is running. I, I'm pretty sure this is the I'm pretty sure this is the standby supply. It should be either five or twelve volts here. But there's nothing, nothing on this side here. Okay, I got the board out here, and as you'll see, there was a plus primary voltage. Uh, I didn't have the camera running. I thought the camera was on when I was measuring, but uh, the camera actually wasn't on, and I pulled the board. My oscillator's not working, but as you can see here, when I measure across the capacitor here, there's still 34 volts charged on this thing. It's slowly discharging. But, um, here, you, can, you guys can see it now. This is the primary filter here on the standby supply, which is what I thought this was the standby supply, and it is. As you can see, it's slowly discharging. So, this oscillator is not running. We'll just discharge this capacitor completely here. There we go. This oscillator is not running for the standby supply. If the standby supply doesn't start up, then we have no uh, chance of the set starting up. Okay, how these sets normally operate is this is the standby supply here. This is the, the primary rectifier, or sorry, primary, primary filter rectifiers over here somewhere. Where is the diodes? Uh, power comes in here. Oh, this is, here's our dial block right here. It's got a couple of them. Um, anyway, our, our, our raw B plus is filtered here for our standby supply. And the oscillator will be on this little module here. This will be the oscillator that controls the five volt supply. And typically how they work is when you first plug them in, and they need a, a, a kickstart to get them going. And it's usually a small capacitor somewhere in this circuit. I'm thinking probably that one right there. Uh, this provides a pulse to start the oscillator going and once the oscillator starts going um, then it continues to run. So let's check the ESR on this capacitor here. So I've got the ESR meter out here and we'll just measure this cap. I believe this is the startup capacitor and that would put it this one right there and I'm measuring 4.7 ohms. And that looks to be a little bit high. So let's pull that capacitor out and just 
take a look at it and maybe replace it. So I've got the cap in my hand here. As you can see, it's coming up at 2.4. We're gonna replace this capacitor with a new one and we'll try the set and see whether um, the set will start up. But I have a feeling that that might be the problem on this thing. Okay, so I've got one new capacitor. That's all I've changed on this is that one little small, uh, it's, it's a boot type capacitor, a soft start. Sometimes people will call it the bootstrap capacitor. It's not really an accurate name for it. An accurate name would be a soft start or a kick capacitor, a kicker. Um, and it, what its job does is as it charges up, it just provides enough of a kick to get it going. Quite a, common, quite a common design on some of the old RCA TVs going back into like the early 80s. They would use a start uh, capacitor that would start the set, start the oscillator running, and then once the oscillator got running, uh, there was a, 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 a feedback from the secondary would keep the oscillator running. Anyway, a um, little different design on these, but same concept. Let's put the board back into the TV and see if the TV will turn on. Now, if this ends up being uh, the cause of the fault on this set, then it'll be the same as, if you guys remember one that I did a while back, um, it would have been probably, I think it was the first plasma set I worked on. I did, it was a Samsung made set. This is an LG made set, by the way. Um, it was actually an Insignia branded TV, if you guys remember. It was one that the screen was kind of, somebody had tried to, I guess, take some marks from a pen that a kid had crayoned on the screen or something and they rubbed the screen really hard and uh, made it nice and shiny. They rubbed off the anti-reflective anti coating. If you remember that set, uh, there was two different videos up on it. One was listed as an Insignia plasma and the other one was listed as um, as a Samsung because I edited them slightly differently. I basically made one version a little shorter than the other, but they were the same set. If you go back and look at that video, you will see that, and that one took me many hours to track that problem down on that set. I was, I was applying power, um, using batteries and stuff to bias the circuit on. This one I didn't uh, spend as much time on because I kind of had an idea from the way it had been described to me when the set was given to me was that the person that gave me the set said that it had worked before they got it and then he saw the set working, but when he got it home, it didn't turn on. So that kind of gave me a place to start. And then what I did is I checked for my 5 volt supply in here and saw nothing, but my main filter capacitor here was fully charged. So that, that gave me grounds to check for something on the board here. And the first capacitor I checked was uh, measuring a little bit high on the ESR department. So now I have to connect all these plugs up again here for the sustain boards. And as you can see, these old plasma sets had a lot of stuff in them. They had a lot of, a lot of parts 
They were, these ones, when Plasma TV got their bad rap for being power hogs, well, these are the sets they were talking about because these early ones did take quite a bit of power. Uh, this set probably draws 300 watts. And for a non-high definition TV, that's a fair bit of juice. Okay, let's see if this thing is going to work. I'm just going to plug the power in. Okay, you guys can see the meter there. I'm going to test it to the test point up top here. This is the, the filter capacitor. If you can see the meter at the bottom of the screen, we have 5 volts. So, the standby power supply is running. Let's try turning on the set and see whether we get any action from any of the, the lights on here. So I hit the power button. Okay, I heard a click. Okay, i uh, got some lights happening down here. I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's some green lights happening on the set. Let's uh, see whether the panel's lighting up. Well, I have a solid white screen, which is uh, better than I had before. I had nothing before. So, we are definitely making progress. Plug in the color bars from the camera and we have a picture. This one's fixed. I'm just going to uh, put the back on this set here and see how good the picture on this thing is. Because this set looks like it could have a really nice picture. It's not a high definition set. If you look at this, if I get the camera in close, you can actually see the individual cells. Okay, there's the individual cells on the screen. I'm going to go over to the yellow, you'll see. These are individual little light bulbs. Let's see if I can focus this camera better. It's probably the best I can get the focus there. But as you can see, this is how the whole color picture is made up on a plasma. You've got these individual little cells. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get the back on this thing, and uh, actually, I'll plug a. I'm gonna plug a video source into it first. I'll plug a component source in and just see how it looks. There it is. Not bad. I'm seeing a couple little sparklies here, a couple little random pixels, which is actually what the guy said that when he when he bought the set, he told me that the guy that was selling it said it had some random little green sparklies, and that the picture was fine other than that. And he said that when he saw it, it had these little random green sparklies, which he was okay with. But then when he got the set home, it didn't work. So what I'm thinking happened on this, the set was running fine when it had power, but when it was unplugged to be transported, that capacitor cooled down, and then when it was plugged back in, it didn't have enough kick left in it to get the oscillator running, and the set was then totally dead. So, we've repaired the power supply, we've got the set working, and we've got it back the way it was before. A couple little green sparkly, that looks like they've gone. No, there's still a few of them here, but that's going to be tough to try and nail down that. I don't think I'm going to worry too much about a couple little green sparklies on the screen, because that could be a number of things that cause that. None of them that are going to be easy to track down. It even could be the panel that's starting to uh, get weak. This is a 2004, so it's 13 years old. So, hey, it's working. It's got not a bad picture. It's only standard definition, but uh, hey, it's totally usable, that's for sure. I'm going to put the back on this thing, and then we'll take another look at it, and we'll close off the video. This is another one of these bloody TVs that, you know, you would think that they could bother to run a file over here. I mean, they, they, they cover... It's, this is like razor sharp. If you, if you grab onto this thing, you're gonna cut yourself. It's another one of these sets that, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's like a razor blade. It's ridiculous. Now, how much trouble would it have been at the factory if they just ran a grinder or a file over this and took that sharp edge out when they cut it? You know, I can just see a lot of people when these were being serviced, there's probably a lot of techs the first time they opened these things up got pretty nasty cuts from this because this is just is ridiculous. It's like Panasonic. Panasonic do the same crap as this. At least Panasonic have a warning on the back that the edge could be sharp. Yeah, this one's got a warning here. You know, it's got warning. Warning. Hazardous voltage. Do not touch. Warning. 
Hot part can burn. Do not touch electric part. Wound. Warning or caution. Mechanical hazard. Do not touch pointed parts. Okay, great. That's great to know when to get the TV open. I'm taking the back off the thing and I'm cutting my fingers off trying to get the back off. And what a joke. At least it, you, 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 they should have put a sticker on the back to warn anybody. But this that's deadly. Anyway, here it is. One last look before the back goes on. There it is. And when I get it together, I'm going to... I got that, the 40 inch LCD running over here, you know, the one with the backlight problem that's now under test before I sell it. Um, I'll probably get that set, sit there for a couple weeks and we'll just test it and make sure that uh, there's not going to be any issue before it uh, finds a new home. But I'll run this one alongside of it and we'll take a look at the picture quality. That one should be better in terms of resolution because it's 1080. This one's 480. We'll let, we'll let you decide which one has a more natural looking picture because technically the plasma should look better in the contrast department by far. Okay, we're going to look at the picture quality off this set. Remember, this is standard definition. We're going to compare it to the 1080 set over here. Now this one on the left is a 1080 television, 1080p, and this one on the right is a 480p. I can see some sparklies in there, which apparently is what the set had a, when the guy got it, the guy that gave it to me got it. It looks like maybe a bit of a panel bias problem. We'll see if it uh, goes away as the set warms up. But it's not bad, you know. It 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 doesn't have the detail for sure, and you, I'm sure you can clearly see the screen on the left has more detail. But for a 480 television, it's actually not too bad. In shots like this, it might not be as clear on the video, but on shots like this, the contrast certainly is better on the plasma. But you also see more, more of the pixelating artifacts off of the low resolution or low bandwidth uh, video source that is uh, being displayed. And I haven't done any adjustments on this either. This is uh, right from right, as soon as I got it working here. So I think my brightness might be a little bit set a little too high, so we'll just uh, go into the menu here, if I can find menu of this remote. See where the settings are set to. Oh yes, uh, yeah, it's cranked way up. Let's uh, just put everything back down to zero and see how things look. There. Oh, it's a little better. Thumb's a little bit too dark there. Contrast and normal. I'm just going to turn the. Uh, oh, it's got day and night mode. Oh, okay. So that's the difference it makes. That looks better. That looks better. I think it changes the color temperature too. Where's the color temperature? Did it? Oh, yes. There we go. Normal, warm, black and white, cool. I'll take it back to normal.
Yeah, that looks a bit better. There, now I've just, I've made some changes to the settings and yeah, that actually looks very good. As, as you can see, the, the sparklies that we saw there are not really that noticeable anymore, but looking at the color of it there, it's it's very good. I mean, it's it doesn't have the sharpness, obviously, uh, of the LCD because it's only a 480 set. But saying that, um, you know, it's got a perfectly acceptable picture. Perfectly acceptable picture. Hope you enjoyed this troubleshooting and repair of this um, Hitachi Plasma TV. Oh, something else that this set has got that, um, check this out. It's got a swivel base. How cool is that? See, there's the real, there's the real advantage of plasma over um, LCD is that you notice that when I swiveled the TV, the picture didn't change. If I turn an LCD TV like that, you'd be out of the prime viewing area and the picture would actually get quite dim. But that's one of the strengths of plasma. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.